As King Charles delivers two snubs to Prince Harry on his trip to the UK, we're asking, is the rift in the royal family now beyond repair? And as Donald Trump reacts angrily to the lurid testimony of porn star Stormy Daniels in his hush money trial, we ask, does he actually want to go to jail? And why was a Green Party councillor able to stand for election despite launching a hateful tirade against a rabbi? And why can't we pick someone who doesn't hate the UK to compete in the Eurovision Song Contest? Good question. Hello and welcome to The Reaction with me, Sarah Vine. And me, Andrew Pearce. We're here every Wednesday on Daily Mail's YouTube channel, so make sure you like and subscribe so you never miss a single episode. Now, Prince Harry's hopes of a reunion with his father, King Charles, have been well and truly dashed. His Majesty's timing has raised a few eyebrows after he dealt two blows to the Duke of Sussex within a matter of hours. Well, on Tuesday, Prince Harry was forced to admit in a statement his father was too busy to see him as he touched down in the UK. And just one hour later, no coincidence, Buckingham Palace announced that Prince William would be made Colonel-in-Chief of Prince Harry's former army regiment. Do you think we are seeing some tough love here from the King? I do. I think something has broken since he last saw him. What was that in February for all yeah, of half an hour? Yeah, they had a half hour meeting they did. and it was quite frosty. It must have been. And some happened, I think, since because yeah. it was, uh, we all assumed that the King would find time to see his son, his runaway son, his prodigal son, call him what you will. But no time in the diary? Ridiculous. Of course no. he could make and, time And this him. afternoon, Wednesday, they're, they're about three miles apart in yep. London. He's, yep. uh, the, the King is hosting a garden party. Which Harry could go to. And Harry is doing a service at St Paul's and, you know, he's not even staying with his dad. I mean, I think most normal families would think that was really quite weird. But I think, so first of all, Harry didn't need to put a statement out saying, mm. my father is frankly too busy to see me. Uh, I had hoped to see him. That was drawing attention to the problem. And there's no doubt in my mind, Sarah, the palace issuing that statement one hour later saying, A, that the, William was to become Colonel-in-Chief of Harry's old regiment was one thing. But then to announce also they were doing a joint engagement on Monday, mm. double bubble. That was the timing was deliberate. Yeah. And it's the king and William fighting back. They've had enough of them. Yeah, I mean, they're basically ganging up on Harry. Yeah, I mean, enough. I mean, and it's understandable why, because, you know, if you go back and read Spare, it's full of awful things that he said about both his brother and his father and their respective wives. Yeah, one and of I, whom who is uh, very yeah. sick. I mean, I, and I think also, you know, the king's been very ill. And I think it's funny, isn't it? When you're very ill, it tends to focus the mind on what yeah. matters to you. And I think, I mean, I think, I know I thought, you know, we've talked about this before, but I did think it might make uh, Charles more, I suppose, indulgent of his son. But in fact, it seems to have gone the other way. He seems to have thought, well, actually, you know, I, I don't need you around me if you're going to be like this. Yeah. I mean, and that's basically what this message is, is, you know, you're not, you, I don't want to see you and <clears throat> I'm giving your job to your brother. <laughs> I think it shows yet again, he simply doesn't trust him either. Oh. He doesn't trust him because, look, we don't know what cancer the king has. We don't mm. know the details of, of, of Princess Kate's. Uh, condition either mm. and I suspect he feels if he talked to Harry one-to-one -one, it would be leaked of course yeah, yeah, yeah. and it would be monetized because Absolutely. the only way Harry seems yeah. to have made any money with his ghastly wife just in case you didn't realize mm -hmm. I can't stand Meghan Markle or Harry really um, is by slagging off the Absolutely, house of Windsor yeah. yeah I mean it's been quite a big week for the king it was the anniversary of his coronation you know, Harry could have come over a little bit earlier and spent a bit of time with him, but I think, you know, and I, I, but I honestly think it's the right thing to do. I mean, the king can't take away his titles. We've discussed this before. Sure. He can't do that. Um, and that would also be seen by some as spiteful, maybe? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I so. I wouldn't think it would be spiteful. I don't think so. But anyway, uh, but also I think there's a complicated thing that if he takes away the title, then she becomes princess or something. Yeah, yeah. And also he was born a royal. Yeah. He was born exactly. a prince. So uh, I think this is the best he can do. And, and I think he's taking the right course of action. I mean, Harry is a very toxic influence in the King's life and he has cancer. He doesn't need any more toxicity. He's already getting chemotherapy or radiotherapy yeah, or whatever exactly. it is he's having. Why does he need another blast of it? And I think another figure in all of this, Sarah, is Camilla, Queen Camilla. Yeah. She is a hugely significant mm. influence in the King's life. She has been very bruised by the terrible mm. things he said about her. And I suspect she probably said, 
don't do it, darling. Mm. Don't see him. It just stresses you out. Well, we don't want you stressed out. Well, openly hostile to Camilla. Very and, hostile. You know, so... Well, what did he call her? The Wicked Witch? Yeah. So I think, you know, she's... And I think the thing is, is that Camilla has proven herself to be very... Um, to be a massive asset to the king. And I think he's, you know, he's doing... I mean, I think morally he's, not, he's absolutely doing the right thing. He's rewarding those people who have been loyal and kind to him in his hour of need, i.e. his son and his wife. And he's, um, you know... Yeah. Ignoring the other guy. If things were better, mm. he could have accompanied his father at the garden party, yeah. for a couple of, met lots of people, people would have been thrilled to oh, see yeah. him because there is still a residual affection for him yeah. amongst some people. But he does, he press releases everything. Why does he do that? I don't know. I think he has a sort of he has a sort of inflated sense of his own self importance, doesn't he? Mm. I mean, he's a bit. He's. I think he's a bit of an Andrew. Well, he's that last poll there is showing that parallel. He, 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 his popularity is plummeting, as mm. is Meghan Markle's, and the only person below them, of course, is the Duke of York. Andrew, yeah. And we know what we want to do with him. We want to send him to Balmoral. Yes. To run the estate. Uh, yes. well, we won't have to see him Never ever to again. Never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. <laughs> and of course, Harry <laughs> and Meghan are going off to Nigeria later in the week, aren't yes. they? So she can discover her colonial roots. Isn't she 43% Nigerian? 43% Nigerian. Correct. Fascinating yes. fact, isn't there it? And I think there's one other point about this. If the king had seen Harry, and then if they if it kicks off in Nigeria mm. just a couple of days after mm. you've seen the king, it would embarrass, cause even more embarrassment I mean, to I the imagine family. they'll have quite a lot of support in Nigeria. Um, Yes, because she can talk about being a woman of colour. Exactly. So, She's and, her favourite And refrain. Charles has had difficulties with the Commonwealth. So, you know, we'll wait and see. Many of you got in touch yeah. with us last week on this story, and we will share some of your thoughts later on in the show. Please keep your comments coming. Email reaction at dailymail.co.uk or comment below. Now, still to come, Donald Trump's reacting angrily to some of the lurid testimony of the porn star Stormy Daniels in his hush money trial. We ask this. Does he actually want to go to jail? And how was a Green Party councillor able to stand in local elections despite launching a hate-filled tirade against a rabbi? Oh, and of course he's claiming he is the victim now. Of course he is. Plus, why does the BBC choose, yet again, someone who hates the Union flag to represent the United Kingdom in the Eurovision Song Contest, which is coming up on Saturday? So, to the United States now, where Donald Trump's criminal trial has taken a lurid turn as porn star Stormy Daniels revealed intimate details about spanking, complete with a magazine bearing his image on his bottom, STDs, condoms, and the missionary position as she took the stand, I mean the stand in the court, in New York. The former president faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. The charges stem from an alleged attempt to conceal a payment to Miss Daniels aimed at keeping her quiet about the alleged affair. Mr Trump has pleaded not guilty and he denies any sexual encounter with Stormy Daniels, though he has acknowledged that his ex-lawyer Michael Cohen paid her quite a large sum of money to keep her quiet. Throughout her evidence, <coughs> Mr Trump cursed and shook his head, prompting another warning for the judge for violating a gag order. Mr Trump has already said he'd rather risk prison than comply with the order. So <laughs> this is, I'm sorry, being the idea that Donald Trump got Stormy Daniels to spank him with a rolled up copy of a magazine with him on the cover is just so very Trump. It's peak Trump. It's and peak I, can, Trump. I totally believe it. I, I, I'm, I'm really afraid sorry. I did. I, I did. Totally when I, it, I thought it. if it had been <laughs> any other politician in America, <laughs> <laughs> if it had been Biden, I mean, it would have been fantastic. It would have done great wonders of Biden's image. But this does play into all the prejudices about Donald Trump, doesn't it? It really does. And it's... his silk pyjamas, <laughs> and sitting there in his boxers. <laughs> And the missionary I'm sorry, position. But the thing is, I don't think any of this will upset his supporters. I think they will think, I mean, basically, he is America's Berlusconi, or rather, Berlusconi was, yeah. I mean, you know, he is. And, and it's the same thing with Berlusconi. It didn't seem to matter how many no. bunga bunga parties he had, or how much absurd, how many absurd hair transplants he had. His supporters just loved him because he was bad, he was naughty, he was. Irreverent, he, you know, you see Trump here, you know, thumbing his nose at a judge. That's, that's, I mean, that is exactly that. what I expect Trump yeah. to do. And the Trump will, will tick him off and he doesn't mind being ticked no. off. He can fine him another $9,000, whatever he got fined last week. What's $9,000 to Donald I mean, Trump? It's nothing. Nothing. Nothing at Spend all. Money. And um, of course he denies having sex with Stormy Daniels. I don't think they talked about um, poetry when they were together, do you? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't Metaphysical know. Metaphysical poetry? Maybe do you think she's they maybe very, they did? Maybe she's, you 
you don't Maybe know. Maybe very literary. Have you met her? She could no, be a poet. Uh, I suspect, though, being a... What do they call her? They don't call her a porn star in America. They call her... An adult entertainment that's star. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's what she's... Yeah. So maybe they do t t talk about Chaucer, Shakespeare. I don't Who think knows? so. I think it was all about sex. Anyway, the point is that if Donald Trump goes to jail... He can campaign for the presidency from jail. Can So, so actually, can he? Yes. Can he be president of the United States of America if, he can, if he's think, in jail? Well, I think it'd be difficult, because I don't quite see how, how he'd hold his cabinet meeting, really. So, so, so if, he, he, if he campaigned campaign. and won, would he then have to be pardoned for the duration of his Would he pardon sprint? himself? Because okay, only in America. <laughs> only in America. And only in America you have a system where the front runner to be president of the United States can campaign to become president of the United States from a prison cell. Yeah. Can you imagine that here? Well, I mean... I mean, we moan about our system here, but hey, blimey, it's, it's got a lot going yes, for it, I know. actually. If you talk about sort of, I don't know, degrading uh, the office of the president of the United well, States I think of America. It's, I think it's making the political system in America a laughing stock. Yeah, it because is. Because Biden yeah. is a laughing stock yes. too. Absolutely. Dopey Joe, yeah. Sleepy Joe, uh, in his in his spongy shoes so he doesn't fall over. Yes, and his spongy pants. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, boxer shorts. Donald Trump, I couldn't get my... I was, I was struggling did you, with Did that. you have him down as a wife front man? I, I just didn't want to even think about it, actually. That was the problem. The silk pyjamas, I got that, and they'd be monogrammed. Of course <laughs> yes, they would. Of that's course very they Playboy would. Mansion, yeah. isn't it? But, what does his wife think who's stuck by him? Because I thought when, when he stood we down... We haven't seen when Melania he, at no, all. But when we, we lost the presidency, I thought, that's the last we see of mm. her. Bye-bye, mm. divorce, off mm. she goes. She's running, she'll be first lady again. Yeah, well, maybe that's what she And she never put her foot wrong as first lady. No, she's very glacial. Well, she didn't say anything. No, she's a, she doesn't say anything. She's just inscrutable. Yeah. She's like the Mona Lisa of politics. Uh, yeah, they must have spare rooms, must have I think separate they probably bedrooms. have, so, yes. I have, they have arrangements, I think. Yes. Well, actually, when he was president, she spent most of the time in Trump Tower yeah. while he was in the White House. Absolutely. With her son. Mm. Um, Baron. Who must be humiliated by this. He's very tall. Yeah. Um, well, um, we think it's very funny, and we both believe the testimony of Stormy Daniels. We're supposed to disagree on this, Sarah, it's but I'm afraid we can't. It is the gift that keeps giving. It is the gift that keeps giving. However, I'm still going to say it again. If I had a vote in the American election, and it was a choice between Biden, Trump, or that awful Kennedy character... You'd vote for Trump, wouldn't you? I would vote for Trump. Mm. What are you going to do? I don't have a vote, so but I have, I, you've got to hypothesise here. I, I, I think I'd vote for Trump, too. I mean, it's a choice between one pile of poo and another pile of poo, but, you know... Big pile and a smaller pile. Or an old pile and a not-so-old pile. What do you think? We'd love to know your reaction. So do comment below, or, of course, you can email reaction at dailymail.co.uk. Still to come, the Green Party councillor who launched a hate-filled tirade against a rabbi. Why wasn't he suspended? Why hasn't he been suspended? Plus, could the BBC choose someone to represent the United Kingdom in the Eurovision Song Contest who doesn't actually hate us for a change? And as numerous celebrities appeared at the Met Gala, in even more revealing costumes, we take a look at some of the more absurd outfits. That woman's waist. <laughs> Green Party is facing a backlash after failing to suspend a councillor who launched a hate-filled tirade against a rabbi. Well, they're pretty shocking scenes at last week's local elections because Mohin Ali shouted Ali, Ali Akbar as he won his seat on Lead City Council. He was allowed to stand despite calling Leed, Leeds University's Jewish chaplain a creep, a lowlife and an animal and branding Israelis white supremacists. Well, guess what? Mr Ali, or Councillor Ali, as he now is, claims he is the victim, saying he's being subjected to hate and hostility. This is just... I mean, this is, this is, this is just part of... The, the whole of last week was shocking because it was all about the sort of sectarian, the rise of sort of sectarian yeah, politics. Which, which you read about brilliantly in your column this Which week. we haven't really seen that much... Well, I mean, since the Troubles, really, in Ireland. I mean, and, and I think that it was shocking because there were a lot of videos on YouTube and other places of councillors who had just been elected um, really just issuing these tirades of abuse against Israel, against the Labour Party. They yeah. seem to be very angry with Keir Starmer. Um, aggressive, uh, threatening, in some cases. This guy, this Mr Ali, um, He's got. Well, he's quite popular on TikTok, and he's he's a gardener and yeah. an accountant, and he has quite right. a big following, and he does quite a lot of posts. Um, 
the situation with this rabbi, I mean, he 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 he, had to go into hiding. he, he, he kind of instigated a massive pylon, mm. and the poor guy had threatening phone calls to his yeah. house. His wife was threat, threatened with rape. His children yeah. were threatened with torture. He had to go into hiding. You know, I'm all for free speech, and everybody yeah. must be able to say what they think. But there's a difference between. You know, saying I don't think what you know Israel is doing is right, and I, or I don't think they're doing the right thing. And there's a difference between saying that and basically accusing some poor guy of being a genocidal maniac, which yeah. is what he did. I mean, the guy, the rabbi in question, had to go back to Israel, and it was on that basis that Ali said, "Oh, he's gone back to kill." He actually said he's gone back to kill yeah, women disgusting. and children. Disgusting. The That's other thing is, Sarah, they're counselors. Yes. Could they talk about? Potholes and bin <laughs> collections mm. and loos and yeah. uh, the bus stop. Absolutely. The position of the bus stop rather than yeah. banging on yeah. about a war in Gaza over yeah. which they've got absolutely, absolutely. no influence. And also, I think this shouting of Alu Akbar, I understand that it's a passionate you know, expression yeah. of your love for God, that's completely fine. But what, what, they ha what people have to understand is that, you know, when those videos, when Hamas filled themselves, mm. riding into Israel and torturing, raping, burning, killing Israelis. Yeah. All the recordings, which they made, yeah. they made, the terrorists themselves made them and, and put them out. All you can hear is them shouting, Alu Akbar. So for, it's, it is a trigger, I'm afraid. And so if you appear in a video, having just been elected as a yeah, councillor yeah. in wherever it is, Bradford Leeds, or wherever, shouting Leeds, that, yeah. people are bound to say, hang on a second, that's uh, weird. The other thing is, the Green Party were made aware by this very newspaper yeah. about this man's yeah. disgusting... In February. Uh, in February, yeah. disgusting... We sent a uh, dossier. Output. Guy Adams, who yeah. is our brilliant investigative yeah. person, sent a dossier to them and they just ignored him. Well, they said it's about free speech. But I think this shows also that the Green Party is not a pro proper professional outfit. It's no. not a professional so political organization. Because if that was the Labour Party or the Tory well, Party or the Lib Dems, I think he would have been suspended. I think he would have been filtered. But the other thing to say is that is that after these local elections, a group of um, uh, a, a group of organisations calling themselves sort of collectively Muslim Vote yeah. have made a series of quite egregious demands yeah. to uh, Keir Starmer, who saying you know they want um, all sorts of all sorts of things mm. like you know you have, Muslims got it. The kids have got to be able to pray at school. Yes, three exactly. times a day. I mean, and, and you know. English schools are not generally, you know, they're most of them, I mean, there are church schools, but most of yeah. them are secular. And that's, you know, so that go, and all these demands, including things like, you must be able to provide a Sharia pension. Yeah. And we don't have Sharia law in Britain. No. This is not a Sharia, the law of the land is the law of the land. It's not Sharia. We don't operate under Sharia rules. And I don't think most people want to operate under Sharia rules. Uh, I, I, um, I, it's a problem for the Labour Party. We are, you know, the, we are broadly speaking a liberal democracy with sort of gentle Christian undertones. And that's one of the reasons why we're so successful in terms of being multicultural. That's why lots of people from different faiths and different backgrounds can live here successfully, because we don't impose ourselves right. on anyone. And what, what, I, what I think is happening here is that certain narrow kind of coterie of, of people are trying to impose their beliefs on the rest of us. Yeah. And it's, it's funny, I, in my piece today, I made a bit of a parallel with the whole sort of trans thing and the caste report, which is that there are parallels because it's about it's about moral cowardice, really. It's about saying, look, I don't mind who you worship or, or who, who your God is or what your beliefs are. That's fine. You're free to practice. That's what we do in this country. But don't try and impose them on me or on the rest of the population. And it was the same with the trans debate. It yeah. was like, of course, if you want to uh, change your gender or whatever, that's absolutely fine. But don't expect me to share a toilet with you, right. uh, you know, or whatever. So I think this is the thing, and I think we, you know, it's, and, and classically, Mr. Ali has said, oh, you know, you're all Islamophobic. That's right. And anyone who criticizes me yeah, is, yeah. is Islamophobic. No, no, no one's criticizing you because you are a Muslim. We're criticizing you because you're saying horrible things and doing well, bad things that are just bad and that it, you shouldn't do. It doesn't matter where you come from or who you are. Uh, it, most people judge what he's been saying as hate crimes. Yeah. For which he should be arrested. Not, I mean, the Green Party should, first of all, have suspended him. Well, they're useful kicked idiots him out of the party. because what they should say, that, you know, this is the problem. People, and hand his file over to the yeah, police. I mean, let, let's look at what happened with the Cass report and let's look at all of those trans children whose lives yeah, have been yeah. ruined as a result of a bunch of useless, useful idiots who weren't, who didn't have the balls, who weren't courageous enough to turn around and say, actually, you know what, this is not okay. Exactly. And I think we need to say, 
it's not okay yeah. to, 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 to do, say the things that you've said online. It's not okay to do what you do. No one is saying that you can't practice your religion. Absolutely not. But what you can't do is is try and impose it on yeah. other people. And, and, and cut the anti Or impose your beliefs. And, and cut the anti-Semitism. Yes. Anyway, we'd love to know your thoughts. Email reaction at dailymail.co.uk or you can comment below. For my allergic reaction this week, I want to return to something I've talked about a few times, those girls of war protests taking over university campuses. Quite right. Well, they've spread to the UK now, and there are concerns for Jewish students' safety. The trouble and, is, I mean, am I mad? No, you're not. And the thing is, we are, of course... It's often said. We, well, <laughs> we defend the right for free speech, we defend the right to protest, we defend the right to demonstrate, but is this going to kick off like in America where Jewish students were being forcibly... Uh, repelled. But they can't. The, They're not. They were not allowed in. to study. Yeah. And th you're are, Jewish. You can't come in. And this and 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 the, the protesters are chanting hateful anti-Jewish yeah. remarks. And they they conflate their uh, 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 allergic reaction, if you like, to Israel mm. with Jewish people. Mm. And it's unforgivable what's happening on our universities. It's I think awful. it's really really worrying. It's awful. It's 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 just again. It's this sort of. Well, and also, a lot of it is ignorance, yeah. I think. A lot of it is and these, ignorance. These are supposed to be clever people. Yeah, they are supposed it's to be university. clever people. They're students. I know, it's extraordinary. And they, 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 well, they're supposed to also be open-minded, yeah. and they're not open-minded. Places and, of debate. Yeah, and they're supposed to be, you know, young and flexible, and they're just, they're, they're, they're so entrenched in their views, yes. so entrenched in their views, which they've probably, got, you know, which I think in a lot of cases, they genuinely... I mean, obviously, you know, sometimes you watch some of these interviews with them and you realise that they don't really understand no. what they're saying. They don't really understand it. It's more of a sort of kind of collective psychosis. They've decided, you know, it, again, it's a bit like the trans thing. Again, it's all of these sort of trendy things. that They've decided that that's what they're going to do and that all Jews are evil. I mean, I personally think that Netanyahu is bonkers and quite dangerous and mm. has a lot of questions to answer. But, you know, I don't take that out of my Jewish friends. No, no. And, what, and, what, and why, why are they saying that universities in this country must have no connection with Israel? Why? I don't understand it. What is the no. logic? What is no. the intellectual exactly. argument they're trying to make? I mean, this is one of the demands that this, this group of people are making uh, on Keir Starmer. They're trying to say that he should sever all, if he becomes prime minister, which he almost certainly will do, yeah. that he should sever all ties with Israel. The only democracy in the only democracy I mean, in the Middle East. Think about that. I mean, that would also mean severing ties with America. Yeah. On, on all our biggest allies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you it's know, stupid. Politically, it would be insane. Yeah, and and these again, these are the, the God help us. These people are the next generation of leaders. I know, and voters. And I fear that they are turning universities into unsafe places. For I mean, Jewish I increasingly students. don't really understand why anyone goes to university anymore. I mean, my son is at university, and I, he's you know, his lessons finished this week. I'm like, what? What, for the summer? Yeah. What? I know. We're, we're barely in May. I know. They've barely, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I know, it's, it's, I'm very old. Oh, so he's at home with you now, is he? <laughs> I know. And that's why she's really fed up. She loves you, really. We know you're yes. watching. But, um, um, anyway. Yes. So, my allergic reaction this week, look, I have to declare an interest. I love the Eurovision Song Contest. Of course. Of course I do. It's 50 years since ABBA won with uh, Waterloo. Yes. Uh, and coincidentally, Sweden won days. last year, of course, <laughs> which means it's being held in Sweden this Saturday. And I suspect a member of ABBA will be on stage, I oh. would imagine, maybe Bjorn. Did I tell you I met him recently? Yes, I probably did. Yes. Of course I did. But my big bugbear, my allergic reaction is, why, oh, why do we insist on picking contestants that are not only not patriotic, they're stupid? <laughs> this year's entry, Ollie Alexander, has slagged off the Union flag. He says it can feel divisive and get this nationalistic. Hello, Ollie, it's a flag. It's a flag, that's it's what they do. It's supposed to be mm, nationalistic. And is there any more nationalistic competition than the Eurovision? <laughs> I no. mean, the whole point is, I don't know how it's going to work because he's also signed a letter saying that he thinks Israel is evil and genocidal. Yep. And of well, course, like, Israel you, I'm going to vote for Israel. Israel in, is in the concert. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. in, well, in the contest. I, we get a vote, I'm going to vote for Israel. Mm. Yeah. Last year, the woman singer, whose name I've completely forgotten, <laughs> like her unmemorable song, her name was... Mueller something or other. Mew, May Mueller. May Mueller. Mueller. May Mueller. Yeah, that's right. She said in 2020, because it didn't take long to unearth her um, social media feeds, quote, I hate Britain. 
Great. So she represented us last I mean, year. I think and there's she an came element. Second last. Because her song was hopeless and out of tune. And <laughs> well, I hope, actually, I hope Ollie comes. Ollie's last. not been doing very well. There's been a bit of a sort of, you know, storm because apparently he was off, uh, off, off key or I don't I didn't listen to it. Didn't but you? I You're think. You're not a fan. What? You're not a fan of your Russian? <laughs> I'd be watching it. I'll be watching it. I will. I tell you who I am a fan of, Graham Norton. I watched Eurovision. It's worth it. I watched Eurovision just because Graham Norton does it. And it was a hard act to follow after Terry Wogan. After Terry Wogan. But he does it so deliciously. And he's so waspish and funny about the contestants and about the acts. I know, especially the British actors. He is a joy to watch. He really is very good at what he does. And that's why why I watch it for a little bit of extra Graham Norton. If only we could bring back that lovely guy, Sam, who was runner up a couple of years ago. Lovely song. Remember him with the long hair? Sam oh God! Ryder. I hated that Sam song. Sam Oh, that I hated that song oh, so Sarah, much. I but I think the problem, going back to your question about yeah. why these we people, pick these I think twits. it's just because they're not very clever and they don't no. really understand politics. And then they get asked a question in an interview, going, "What's your favourite colour? Do you like flags?" And they, don't, <laughs> and they just say oh, something. They just say flag. any it's, of it's it. It's nationalistic. But well, one thing I would say, I would say about. Ollie, whatever his name is, Ollie Alexander, is that he was in that really good series, uh, It's a Sin. Brilliant. And he was actually really good in that. He was good, that. And I think he got a... As an actor. I think he got a BAFTA or something. Yeah, he did very well in it, yeah. But that doesn't Um, make him a great singer. No, but he's a good actor. Anyway, let us know your opinions by commenting below or emailing. And will you be watching, like me and Sarah? (laughs) Reaction at dailymail.co.uk. Last week, we discussed whether there would be a reunion between Prince Harry and <laughs> Charles. Like, Carol says, who on earth would invite anyone to stay with them when everything they say and do could end up in a book, a podcast or somewhere else? Yes. You're, you're quite right. And Dice says they've offered too many olive branches to my reckoning a whole bloody forest full. No, it's for Harry and his wife to apologise to the royal family and to the people of Britain. Can they be exiled by any chance? Hmm. Lorraine says William is in touch with the feelings of the British people and after all he has enough on his plate without having to deal with a petulant child grifting in from the States. Oh, that's quite harsh. <laughs> but I like it. And Elaine says I don't think the King should accommodate Prince Harry. He caused too much anxiety. It's simply not worth doing. We also discussed whether Harry Potter star Daniel Radcliffe was right to say his beliefs don't have to align with J.K. Rowling's just because she made him a star. Well, Robin says Harry Potter, Arthur Daniel Radcliffe, doesn't have to share J.K.'s view on things, but he can be respectful. He's kind of a jerk. <laughs> Lynn says Daniel Radcliffe can disagree with her, but he owes J.K. Rowling gratitude and respect. It's unfortunate that in trying to fit in with woke Hollywood, he's become a jerk. Another person that says he's a jerk. <laughs> Great word. <laughs> And if you want to message us about any of this week's talking points, please do by commenting below or email reaction at dailymail.co.uk. Now it's time for the showbiz reaction. Katie Hind is on her holidays this week, but we are lucky enough to be joined by fashion columnist and stylist Joanne Hegarty. So there was a huge seismic event in fashion this week, the Met Gala. Shall we start by talking about yes. that, Joanne? Yes. Oh, thank you for having me. This is very <laughs> exciting. It's a joy for us. <laughs> well, we've had to steal you from ITV. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. I didn't get it. The fashion. So the yes. theme was mm. Eternal Garden of something. It was meant to be the the idea. I think was it was all meant to be about sustainability. Oh, and that, true. Oh. Oh, was it? Really? Oh, <laughs> but fashion it is the opposite more. of sustainability. Surely, yeah. fashion is about newness. Well, I think and and those new... fashion items, they wear them once. They're never going to wear them again. Anyway, What's sustainable about that? The point is, what did you think? Yes. What did you think of the outfits? They they were well, they had some mixed reviews, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. Well, I think it was kind of typical. All the attention seekers went yeah. to the attention grabbing clothes, you know, or no clothes actually. <laughs> yes, there was there a big no-clothes no clothes theme. Clothes. Yeah. So I think, um, so yeah, it was all the attention seekers wanted that. And then there was a few, the outfits I liked were barely mentioned because, you know, they weren't attention grabbing right. enough. Which one did um, you like? So I liked um, Kaya Gerber had a lovely Prada sequin dress on, which I don't know how sustainable that is, but it was beautiful. Doesn't sound very sustainable, <laughs> does it? And um, I liked um, Phoebe Denver's uh, Victoria Beckham. Oh, Victoria, I didn't see that. Yeah, mm. apparently it's uh, Victoria Beckham's first um, Met Gala mm. debut. Oh, that's so, good. And it was really pretty, kind of feminine pink um, tulle dress with little flowers on it. But, mm. um, yeah, it what was did really you nice. loathe? 
what? Um, well, just the obvious one, which I thought was really nuts, was Kim Kardashian. Is but, this with know. the sort of six inch waist? Yeah. How did she squeeze into yeah, that? Yeah, but she, she was wearing a sort of, I mean, you're wearing a rather chic little card today, but she was sort of wearing a kind of Apparently jumper. Apparently her boyfriend's. Oh, right, it's her boyfriend's jumper. Yeah, right. apparently okay. she grabbed it on the way out. It was her boyfriend's right. jumper. Right. Um, and just threw it around her shoulders. But, but how do you get your waist into an eight, eight inch? Oh, it was, well, was some, it was, was some the, the dress, yeah, the dress was made by um, Mason Margiela. So, and he, there, he that, that designer is really into like conceptual, Fashion. So I and he works with this couture, this yeah, so it's all a person, couture thing. doesn't yeah. he? There's a person who's called yeah. Paul, I think. But how did she walk in it? Um, I, well, to be honest, I was wondering the same thing myself. I thought, yeah. yeah, and I was wondering also how you would like for the night, go to the loo, perhaps go to the powder room. You know, how did you do basic things like that? I mean, <laughs> just look, like just look at well, I mean, she, look, she looks that, ridiculous. She yeah. looks ridiculous. There yeah. was that South African singer Tyler who turned up in what I thought was quite a witty oh, yes. dress, yeah, which was made sand. out of sand. Yes, but she couldn't walk, time. and they had to sort of put her. In. And then yeah. afterwards, they cut the skirt off, didn't they? Oh. Well, yes. that's not very sustainable either. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she had a, a um, yeah, she, it was by, by, I think, Balmain, yeah, mm. by, and, mm. um, yeah, and then she needed, I think, about five men to help her up the steps. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, fashion, it just looks painful. Yeah, I, that's what I thought, particularly of these looks. I mean, I have to say, I thought Anna <laughs> Winter's outfit was terrible. Did I, you? Did you yeah. see, what did you think of that? Well, she normally, she loves florals, doesn't mm. she, normally? So I think the theme was right up her alley in the sense that she got to wear florals mm. on her jacket. But the white underneath, I don't mm. think that worked at all. Did she wear uh, her stupid sunglasses? No, she didn't. Oh. And then yeah. Doja Cat, who oh, is yeah. not Doja a cat, is a person, is a right. pop star, yeah. Never heard of them. Um, turned up in a sort of, okay, so there, let's talk about the see-through thing, because oh, there was yeah. a lot of yeah. that. Yeah. So um, there's this this woman called, what's she called, Bianca Censori. She goes around in these sort of transparent things, mm. and at, at least four or five people did the same. Rita Orwa, mm. she had a sort of see-through pair of old lady tights, but it's yes. basically American tan. Yeah, which when was, I was yeah, young, it was, was a dress by right. Tom Ford, and mm. um, well, it was beads by Tom Ford because there wasn't actually a dress. It was, um, and the beads apparently Is were as there? old as one, were yes. as old as any living person right. in the Met Gala. Or, Oh, was, really? Was re oh, were, yeah, older. So and the beads are really, really old why is in that, that dress. What is that hideous brown leather outfit that man's wearing? <laughs> That's that is her husband. hideous. That's, That's her husband, her husband, is it? Yeah. Well, he looks ridiculous. Yes, yeah. I never understand And that looks really uncomfortable. No, yeah. it's not a great look, is it? But she loves. She that's her kind of that's her typical outfit. She is doesn't it? wear very much normally to um, events. But it's that thing of just wearing to a be sort noticed. Of, sort mm. of a, a pair of see-through American tan tights. I just don't understand yeah. why you would do that. It's just to show bizarre. off your body. I guess yeah. is that yeah. the thing. I, I imagine. I mean, she has a great body, so I imagine she thinks, oh, you know, I'll show it off. And but some, Zendaya has a great people. body, and yes, she looked does. amazing. Yeah. What did you think of her stuff? Yeah, I thought it was very dramatic. Um, she was co-chair, wasn't she? Mm. She was one of the co-chairs, and um, yeah, I thought it was really dramatic. What you got on her head? But she's beautiful. She could wear a bin bag. To yeah. Be honest. But what's that? On, <laughs> what's that on her head, Joanne? Um, so that's a big floral kind of hat. Right. Yeah. She makes you think of Karma Miranda, but nobody will remember who <laughs> she the, was. And the Kardashians turned up and just sort of basically wore whatever they felt like wearing. Yeah, well, that's kind of typical them. They kind of think that they rule the world. And well, they sort of do, don't yeah, they? Yeah, it's really tragic. I mean, I just don't get the Kardashians at all, and I despise them, to be honest. Oh, <laughs> controversial. And also, and also <laughs> we like, I think, we like I controversial think you and here. Everybody else. And then I saw that um, that uh, Irish actor Barry Keoghan turned up, and he was wearing. He looked like something. He looked like Willy Wonka. Oh, really? The men didn't have a good Met Ball, did no, they? No, no, no. I guess they were trying to be kind of outlandish, um, and it's quite hard, isn't it, for a man to be stylish and you know outlandish? At least with a, a woman, you get to kind of. I think I, I, I can be outlandish. I could be outlandish, Joanne. Let well, me show next you. Next time, I, well, I, I was hoping to see out some outlandish outfits. Not today. today. So, do you think, Joanne? Do you think the problem was the theme just being a bit vague? Um, yeah, yes, for perhaps maybe some of the clientele, maybe mm. they didn't read the small print. And why do you think that kind of the big names like Beyonce didn't go, did she? 
Uh, Rihanna didn't go. Why didn't they turn up? Is, is the Met Ball, is the Met Gala lot, devaluing a little bit, do you think? I imagine there's a lot of politics involved mm. um, behind the scenes. Well, I, yeah, because didn't Anna Winter do that documentary about organising it mm. and how the table seat, the table plan is an absolute nightmare. It right. takes months and months Because to, of status. Yeah, status. And who sits and next who gets to who. On with who. What, what, what do you think the point of it is? I mean, well, I think it's just, it's, I guess for Anna Winter, it's a great achievement, isn't it, to get all these big mm. names together and... She has an incredible just, network, isn't she? But do you yeah. think it's become almost kind of more sort of influential than the fashion shows? Um, I don't know. I think it's an add-on. It's I just an yeah. add-on. Yeah, I think it's just for, it's entertaining. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. Would you like to be invited? Me? Mm. I, I secretly yes. Yes, I thought so. <laughs> I secretly, yes. So. I mean, you I'm wearing to, a floral to, top Well, today. that's a good start. <laughs> what would you but, wear, Sarah? If you were well, invited? it would depend on the scene. <laughs> what about the see-through? Whatever. Definitely not wearing American tan tights. You're not wearing American no. tan tights. No, okay. definitely wearing a bra. <laughs> but I think I think we can see this time next year, Sarah will be part of the photo <laughs> montage. Yeah. Well, going did, to you, did you hear about the M&S fake bum thing? <gasps> yes, yes, the M&S. I do not need crazy. a fake bum. I've got about four bums. That, All but, of them sadly real. Uh, I think that stems from the Kardashians. Yes, that yeah. absolutely does. Yes, every every single female journalist in Britain seems to be writing about their fake bums. I've yeah. noticed. It's a it's a pair of pants that make you look like you've got a big a big bunda. I did read about as that. As my daughter yeah. would call it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I have a very small perch bottom, so I wouldn't want to wear those. <laughs> That's your pride and joy. Your yes, bottom. exactly. Um, anyway, that is it for today. Please join us again next Wednesday if you can for more reaction to the stories making the headlines. And to make sure you like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode, particularly Sarah Vine, who's going to come dressed for the Met Ball next week. So see you again next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.